morning everyone uh, Saturday chart session my favorite time of the week but this week I'm gonna do something a little different because I just did those monthly chart sessions two days ago today I'm gonna go over what I look for when I'm using my scanner to analyze what I'm gonna look for in the upcoming week um, first off let's look at the spy for this past week you can see this trend line from uh, the June lows. You know, we bounced on it back in mid-July, and then we just bounced on it twice this week. We're, we're really hanging by a thread here on the SPY. I mean, this thing is either going to bounce or it's going to die. But the uh, MACD does not look good. The RSI is basically back at lows we haven't seen since June. This is a really, really ugly setup, and... The only saving grace is we bounced twice off this trend line this week. Now, let's talk about what I look for in a scanner. So every one of these um, charting tools that you guys have, whether you have TOS, whether you have Schwab, E-Trade, whatever, inside there's a scan tool. You see right here, scan. So you would click on the scan tool and the, the parameters that I look for when I'm scanning for things, I look for new 52 week highs take notes new 52 week highs i look for bullish macd crossovers on a weekly time frame i look for bearish macd crossovers on a weekly time frame and i look for weekly bullish engulfing candles that's it those are my four parameters okay and so when i look at those four i take notes usually by pen and paper and I begin my discovery process of what am I gonna look for in the week ahead, all right? And I like to use these because I like to look for names with strength and I don't wanna get caught off guard with a weak name. And so for those of you who know me, you know I like to trade names in strong uptrends. That's it, okay? I don't like to worry much about the overall macro picture of the market. Um, I've been saying for weeks, you know, this isn't the time to be buying tech and tech has just been getting slaughtered. Okay. Uh, other names have held up, you know, this, this trend we've been in oil names have actually held up the last couple weeks. So, um, you know, those who are in my sub stack know I've been trading oil names mostly, uh, this week wasn't good for those names, but you know, it happens short term, you know, one week thing and we'll continue forward trading names that are in strong uptrends. And so um, I pointed that out in the last video. What, what do I deem an uptrend? You have to look at it on a longer time frame. So like if you look at something like Occidental, right? That's the one Warren Buffett's been buying. If you zoom in on the daily, it looks terrible, right? It's, it's come down a lot. It's below some moving averages. Uh, some of these daily moving averages are sloping down. But if you look at the weekly time frame, you can see a clear uptrend. All the moving averages are pointed north. That's what you want to see. And even right here, you can see the weekly MACD crossed over. That's bullish. Even though the candle was red last week, right? That means it closed lower than it opened. The MACD was green. So there is strength, there is buying, and oil is still in an uptrend, so to speak, okay? but. Let's look at the names that made new 52 week highs this week, all right? Have your pen and paper ready and let's talk. So, um, Cardinal Health here, okay? Cardinal Health hit new 52 week highs this week in the midst of this red tape. Uh, this name I know slightly, I think Elliott Management's involved here. I, I really don't like healthcare names myself, but look how overbought this is. Look at this, look at the RSI. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and you buy Cardinal Health. This is really, really overbought. But it's good to know what names hit new 52-week highs, all right? And so, uh, let's see, TRQ hit 52-week highs this week. I don't even know. You know, a lot of these names, I don't even know what they are. Uh, God, this thing has gaps all over the chart. Look at this thing. So, when you're going through the discovery process, you know, you might find one name. You know, all it takes is one name. Right? When you go through the discovery process, you're finding names that you want to begin to look at for a longer term trade. So this next one, ALT, also incredibly, incredibly overbought. Look at the RSI. I mean, you, you can't touch that. Uh, CCXI 
Here's another one. I mean, look at these gaps. Some of these names are just, wow. Look at this, 83 on the R side. These, these are untouchable. Even though they are hitting new 52 week highs, uh, none of them are like healthy moves, okay? Next we have this Mantec. Uh, this one's RSI is only 60. So this one's interesting, but here's the thing. You see this massive gap below? I mean, yeah, if you wanna sell puts back at 82, whatever, these gaps fill. But if you wanna go out a couple months, weeks, whatever, and sell puts here at 8250, yeah, sure. This is a strong name. The RSI confirms it. Uh, this is this, and what's incredible is this name hit new 52-week highs while the MACD was red. So this is an interesting one. You know, I'd put it in my notes, and I, I would sell puts here at this gap fill. Uh, RXDX. Let's see what this is. So RXDX. Look at this. This is another name. Incredibly overbought. I mean, you just, you can't trade stuff like this. Look at this. It was, I mean, this was a $30 stock in, in July. And if you notice, all these are biotechs. So uh, not all of them, but most of them were biotechs. That tells me they were probably names that moved on good data. And uh, I, I don't really trade biotechs, but once a name has good data, you know, it's, it's, it's set up for a longer run, but I, I don't trade biotechs. I'm not, I'm not looking to trade things with binary events. Okay, so my next favorite indicator is weekly bullish MACD crosses, okay? So go here, change it up to a weekly time frame, and let's pull up some names that had what I look for. So I showed you already Oxy had it. So here's TD, Toronto Dominion Bank, and what you see here, bullish divergence on the MACD on a weekly time frame, and it just crossed, right? You can see it was green. Even though the candle was red this week, had a bullish MACD cross. You see that? It's very faint, you know, but it's green. And so that's one. Uh, here's one, OVV, where you can see here another bullish MACD divergence. And look, the stock has gone up recently. And look, I would sell puts on something like this down here at this lower moving average. See this 47.35? You can sell puts here, 47.35. Um, it's a good level for a name like that. Let's see, FMX. This is Fomento Econ, this is some Mexican ADR. Uh, don't know what it is, but I don't care because we're trading charts. And you can see here, look at this, look at this weekly MACD cross, right? Beautiful. And the last time it had a MACD cross right here, you can see it had a nice little trend run uh, when the MACD crossed and went up. You can see it here as well. The MACD crossed here. It had a nice run. And uh, it just had one here. So look at that. It's hanging right over a key moving average. Yeah, I mean, you can sell puts lower. Look at this. It has nice support here at 59. You can sell puts lower on it. Uh, but this looks like a name set up for a nice little run. Uh, next, we're going to look at SBS, which is, look, this is another ADR. Uh, I think it's in Chile, actually, when I was going through my notes. But... Let's pull up here. Look at this, MACD cross. Look at this strong, strong trend it's been in recently. And all the moving averages are pointing up. Look at this, you can sell puts here at 848, right? And try to get long down here a dollar lower. But this is a name that should continue rising in an uptrend. Uh, it, bucked, it bucked the down market this week. Look at it, you know, it had a nice green candle this week. So, you know, there's always a bull market somewhere and it's your job to find it. And that's what scanning through these emerging strength names does. You know, just because Google and Apple and Amazon are red, that doesn't mean, you know, the market's done. Something's gonna be going up. And here's another one, Murphy Oil, right? Look at this, bullish divergence, MACD flipped green, very strong trend recently. I mean, look at this, this thing's up almost, I don't know, 35, 40% in no time. It's over all the key moving averages. Yeah, I would look to sell something down here at 34 below the moving averages. Again, the, the point is you don't want to get stuck with the stock. And if you do, you want it to be at a level that's, you know, solid. And so down here, look at this, has really good support at 34. And you know, going back to over here, it just goes all the way through. There's a big volume shelf there. That's, that's a decent spot to go along the name. Uh, what else? V Venom, what is this? Viper Energy Partners. 
just from the name partners, I I think this might be an MLP. I don't like to hold MLPs because you have to get K1s and it's just a tax headache when you're doing your taxes. Uh, so I, I never recommend those out to retail investors. If you, if you have a CPA doing your taxes, they're fine. But you know, just as a trade, if there's no dividend involved here, look at this. This name was up 3% yesterday in the bad tape, right? The MACD cross green. This is another strong, strong chart. Look at this. It's, it's holding up over here. And uh, yeah, you can sell puts at like 29. Look at that, a dollar lower. It, it seems to have real, real strength over that 28.77. So somewhere down there, but very, very strong chart. And the last one is WFRD Weatherford. This is another, uh, I believe, oil field services name. And um, look at this chart, right? Bullish divergence, weekly MACD. And so look at this. Look how strong it's been since July. It's up, yeah, almost 50%. Look at this strong trend. And again, you could sell puts a couple months out down here, 24. Uh, and the premium will break over time. You know, I, that's why I try to sell puts three weeks, eight weeks out, and just let the premium melt away. Okay, but uh, strong trends like this, they don't break easily. And Weatherford finally flipped green after, look how long uh, this chart's been, oh, I clicked the wrong one. Look how long this chart's been red. Look at this, it's been here since April, right? So it went through a nasty, nasty downturn and now the RSI is pointing up, now it's a strong chart. This is when you wanna be involved with it. So, you know, every day when I post, my table of all the unusual options trades. If you mark those down, okay, and you combine them with your scanner, right, you have to go back and look through the names I posted and see, are any of these names coming up in the scanner? Is there unusual options activity combined with the charting that I'm seeing? And if it does, you have the recipe for a very, very good name. You know, as I've said in my Substack, I'm somewhat hiding out in Twitter for the time being. I really don't like the way the market's been moving. Um, you know, I think Twitter is a binary event that's basically a done deal. Even yesterday, the judge kind of laughed at Elon and his venture partners. Um, so I'm kind of hiding there and letting the market go through the nasty period that it's going through. And it's eating up a lot of my capital and my margin. But I'm very confident that, you know, I'll make 20% in the next two months on the trade that I have on. And for me, that's enough. Uh, the Twitter trial is October 17th. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of like sitting there kind of on the sidelines watching the market come, come apart really the last two weeks especially. And so that's what I'm doing in the market. But um, if I didn't, I would be going through all of this here. I would be going through all these names and doing that exactly. But for me, you know, especially now we have the new baby at home. I'm trying to, you know, enjoy spending time with him. And I don't want to be in front of my screens all day watching, you know, charts going up and down. So that's why I've chosen Twitter to hide out, so to speak. You know, I have a couple of trades in oil on. But um, I'm not trying to be as active as a trader right now at this moment. I'm trying to, you know, have fun with the baby and not get too caught up in the markets. So the next indicator I look at is the weekly bearish MACD cross. And now this is for names to avoid. Now this list was really long. I, I just highlighted some big ones that you guys might have. So this is Procter Gamble. You can see here, weekly bearish MACD cross. This, this chart's been in an ugly downtrend. I mean, look, it's below all the moving averages. This is a very, very ugly setup. Now, it's a great name. You can probably sell puts here at the 200 at 130, 180. That's probably a solid spot to go long. This is a great consumer staple uh, name, but inflation is crushing names like this. Uh, next, let's look at Avago Broadcom. This is another name, right? Uh, very popular name. Uh, this actually had pretty good earnings recently, but weekly MACD cross bearish below all the moving averages. This is an ugly chart. There's nothing to say. It's an ugly, ugly chart. Look at this. There's a clear head up here. It's pointing lower. You want to be? You don't want to be involved in that right now. Here's Caterpillar, right? Everybody loves Caterpillar. 
and Caterpillar's approaching the 200 uh, week. So this is a big spot here. He still puts at 170. I mean, this is bounced here most of the time. Very rarely has it gone lower. Caterpillar's a great name, but you know, it's been in this nasty, nasty downtrend. Look at this, since May, it's down, I mean, almost 20%, which for a name like this is pretty, pretty rare. So you can see here, clearly below all the moving averages and negative MACD. It's just not the time to be long Caterpillar. And next you have Mondelez, obviously Mondelez, you know, leader in snacks, used to be part of Philip Morris, very defensive name. But here you go, weekly MACD cross bearish. You notice they're all below the moving averages. It, they're just, there's just something when a chart is below all the moving averages you know, it, it's just something you want to avoid. And that's why I try to play names with strength. Now, you can short these names, right? You can get short these names. I just personally, for myself, I don't care to play the short side of things. I would rather just play the long side. And if I'm stuck with names, I'm stuck with them. But I know they're in uptrends. I can sell covered calls, whatever. When you're short, you can't really do anything similar to selling covered calls to make money weekly on your position. And so... I just don't like to do it. I, I like to make money every week and I, I don't like to waste time being short. Even though um, it, it, it's fairly easy when a name gets under a downtrend just to get short, but I, I don't like to buy puts. You know, puts, they melt away. Like if a stock is flat for a day, your pull, your puts are gonna melt 20%. I, I just don't enjoy it. It's not, it's not something I like to do. Um, next, let's look at Zoetis. This is a leader in animal medicine and this is an interesting setup here. Look where it stopped, right at the 200. If we zoom out, right, let's zoom out. The last time it hit here, look at this, had a really, really strong bounce, right? Same thing, MACD, really oversold. We're not really oversold right now, we're kind of in the middle. But Zoetis is a very, very good name and rarely does it get down here. But the MACD is bearish, but you know what? I would put Zoetis on your watch list and whenever Zoetis begins to have a bullish divergence and turn up, this is a name you probably want to be long down here. I mean, this is, look, this was 250. It's 156. This is, this is the leader in animal medicine, all right? This is a great, great long-term hold. And it's a name nobody really talks about, but it's one of those, like, you could buy forever. Next, let's look at Hershey. This has been a name that's been leading the market all year. Look at this run that it's had. Right, this thing's been straight up all year. It's been the defensive name. But you see here, the MACD cross, it's coming down. But look, it's this one's holding on to, right? It closed right at one of the key moving averages. So I, I wouldn't say this one's really in a downtrend yet. You know, it would be when it's below all these, but this is a pretty ripe short. I mean, this is a name where uh, this thing has not gone down all year. This was, look at it, 170 last September. It's still up. 30% from then. I mean, I, I, I don't know why, probably multiple expansion. I doubt their earnings really exploded higher. Let's look next at Kimberly Clark. This is another name like Procter Gamble, very defensive. Look at it. Below all the key weekly moving averages, even the 200, the 200 is way up here at 135. It's down here at 126. Uh, very, very ugly setup here on Kimberly Clark. Next, we have Realty Income. This is a name I know a lot of people like for dividend income. They own a ton of commercial real estate. But this is, I mean, this is a name, right? This doesn't do much. Let's, let's zoom out. Well, let's zoom in. I mean, it stopped right at the 200, right? And historically speaking, look at this. This has been a good spot to buy it. Like, it, it goes under for like a short period, but it always bounces back over. Now, this is a good name. It's a good name, but you can see here, the MACD finally barely crossed. You can see it right there. Look at it, right there. It finally crossed just by a little hair, but not a nice setup, but this isn't a name that does much. I mean, you can sell puts and take the shares and then sell calls. It, it just sticks around this like mid 60s level forever, basically. Look at this since, uh, yeah, basically back in, March of 2021, it's done nothing. Okay, next let's look at weekly bullish engulfing candles. Now, this is you know my final thing that I look for when I'm looking for 
my scans. And so a lot of these are going to be names that you don't know. And when you zoom in, look, this is Smith and Nephew ADR. I don't know what this is, but you know what? It put in a weekly bullish engulfing candle. That is the candle uh, started below the previous week and it closed above the previous week. Okay. Now that signifies a lot of buying that signifies it takes a lot of buying. You know, the name opened red and they bought it all week to close it higher. Now this particular one is still below all the key moving averages, but you see a slight bullish divergence here on the weekly. Now this looks like it's at 52 week lows basically. Right. And so this looks like a name where you could sell puts down here at 2356. And here's the thing, when a bullish engulfing candle occurs, more often than not, there's continuation. So you, you look at, you know, last Monday, I posted on my Twitter, Kamiko had a bullish engulfing candle, right? You see this, it engulfed the previous week and look what it did this week, it continued higher. Now, another name that had a weekly bullish engulfing last week was Snowflake, right? Snowflake had one. And this week, it just put in an inside week, which is a consolidation week. You know, a lot of tech names broke the previous week's lows, right? Like if you go to say Google, right? Here's Google. Google broke below last week's lows, okay? But when you go to Snowflake, it put in a bullish weekly engulfing, right? Huge volume, you know, bullish chart. This week, it just consolidated. So when a name puts in a weekly bullish engulfing, it's telling you there's serious buying involved and you wanna be in that name. And so again, when you look at Kamiko, you know, I've said I've liked this name for a long time. It's, it's like a nuclear energy leader. It's the biggest name in the uranium ETF. So when you look at Kamiko, when it put in this candle, it was on the news that Japan basically said, hey, look, we're done with the ESG nonsense. We're going to focus on nuclear power. And Kamiko exploded. And the reality is going forward this week, we had news that Iran was going to begin enriching uranium. And so Kamiko spiked again. And so what you're getting is, what you're getting is back here, you know, people are always in the know before these things happen, funds, uh, bigger players. And they slowly bought up Kamiko, right? Before the Japan news, after the Japan news, then the retail investors pile in and they push it higher and this candle forms. These candles don't form on nothing, right? They form on things of substance. And that's why I try to tell people technical analysis isn't a game. It's simply the charts telling you what the market's doing. And so if you begin to accept that and follow it, you'll see how a name like Kamiko put in a bullish engulfing and followed it up with another next week. So when we look at this week here, right, the names with bullish engulfings on the weekly, here's DXC, look at this, it posted it here. And this is a name I don't know. I mean, I'm being honest with you. I don't know this name. And so, um, but that happens a lot. I don't, I don't know every single ticker, but you can see here, bullish divergence. And so if you look at this 24 level, right, this stock was up like 15% this week. You can probably sell puts down here at 24. And if you get long the stock, great. I mean, this was a level that clearly got bought up hard. And so next we have MRTX. Okay, let's look at this name. This is interesting here. Look at this, this name was 250, it's 81. It must've had failed uh, data since it's a biotech. Now, look at this, okay? There's your weekly bullish engulfing candle. Look at it. It's sandwiched between all these key moving averages. I, I, I don't like biotechs, but if you wanna trade this one, I mean, in the short term, maybe like a week out, just because I don't want to be in biotechs long term. You know, maybe you can sell puts here. What, what is this, like 72 where it opened this week? Maybe you sell puts there and maybe get long stock. But this is a nice little bull flag right here. You can see, right, if you draw it like that. Uh, it's a nice little bullish flag that actually it looks like it's targeting maybe this 120 level. But biotech, not really my thing. Next we have Calm. Here's another one. I don't know. And look, I don't care. Look at this bull bullish engulfing candle it put in, right? All the moving averages are pointing up. The MACD is having a bullish divergence. Look at this. It's nearing overbought levels. I mean, this is a really strong chart. And look at this thing. It went from 6 to 12 in 7 weeks. Now, 
I'm not saying rush out and buy it, but look, if you sell puts here at eight ninety eight. 838 you know this this name probably has like nine dollar puts eight dollar puts it might not even it might have ten dollar puts 750 I, I don't know uh this looks like it might have even been like a spac or something but look you can't deny this is a strong chart and yeah i mean you could sell puts lower to get involved with a name like this now bhc obviously a lot of you know this this is that old name that died on the fraud charges in 2015 look at this it was 260 it got down here and it just keeps dying right but it finally put in a weekly bullish engulfing and you know what this thing hasn't crossed over the 10 weekly all year let's see if there's a continuation here but look it's got pretty strong support here at the four level and the macd is now bullish and crossing and look at this you see this the rsi is about to cross from oversold into normal territory for the first time since may look at this that's how oversold it was so this might be a name you want to sell puts on uh lower it's only six dollars and 45 cents uh th this is a real company it's just been through you know six seven years of just disaster next we have nutanix now this this name always comes up as cheap on all scanners and if you look recently this this name you know in the tech space super super cheap name and very impressive relative strength look at this seven straight weeks green when you know what the market's done the last seven weeks it's been horrendous so look at this candle that it's putting in i don't know why this came up on my bullish engulfing scanner because this isn't technically a bullish engulfing but look at this macd strong rsi strong Nutanix, this might be a name where you want to sell puts. Here, $19, $18. This looks like a name you want to be involved with in the short term. Next, we have Agio, which is a biotech again. Not my cup of tea, but look at this. Over all the moving averages except the 200, okay? And they're all pointing up. And look at the MACD, strong, RSI strong. Look, this looks like a name you want to sell puts on lower. You see this huge candle here? This is where you, they probably had news here. That's why you got that huge move from 20 to 30. I mean, that's a 50% move. So you probably want to, if you can, sell puts down here at like 21, maybe two, three months out and see what happens. But this looks like a stock. Look at this, two huge weekly candles. This looks like a name you want to be involved with for the next month or two. Okay. Uh... Lastly, let's pull up Groupon. I didn't even know people still use Groupon. But yes, you can see the bullish engulfing here. Uh, you know, this is a name I, I've seen calls on it all year. It's like there's constant buyout rumors. Nothing ever happens. But again, this is a name. Strong MACD, bullish engulfing, but it's below all the moving averages. But look at this. It's gone nowhere and forever. This looks like a name where you could sell puts at like $9. And if you get the stock in two months, you get the stock. But overall, as I said, guys, for me personally, I'm hiding out in Twitter for the time being. Yes, I know the chart is terrible. It's below all this stuff. But again, this has a binary event that's uh, six to seven weeks away. And I really do think... Elon's going to be forced to purchase it. Even yesterday, the judge mocked Elon's venture capital um, partner, David Sachs. Uh, he apparently tweeted a picture of someone pissing on a subpoena. The judge wasn't really too impressed by it. And look, Elon knows he's stuck. I mean, he already sold his Tesla stock. Now he's kind of going with this strategy of let me throw 8 million things at the wall and uh, see what sticks. But it's probably not going to work. This judge is clearly not uh, as enamored with Elon Musk as many other people. Uh, he's kind of been above the law for the longest time possible. This judge has a reputation to uphold. Uh, she is the chancellor of this Delaware court, which is probably the best business court in the world. And she took on the case herself. You know, she's the one who assigns cases. She could have assigned it to anyone and she took this case because I think she's going to make an example out of Elon Musk. And so, yeah, he's trying all this nonsense right now, but there's really nothing there for him to back out. His biggest mistake was waiving due diligence on the uh, on the matter. 
If he hadn't, he would have been able to just back out, you know, maybe pay a fee and leave. But because he didn't, he's kind of stuck here where if the judge rules and he doesn't close, he could just go to jail. And so it isn't a laughing matter. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to see because Elon's kind of been the guy who never... Uh, rules don't apply to him. And they appear like they're about to in two months. And so if that happens, you know, obviously he's going to have to sell more Tesla. But... Um, I'm even being conservative under the camp that, you know what, maybe this Twitter deal gets done at a lower price, even though there's absolutely no need for it to happen. Maybe Twitter gets tired of the appeals and Elon's nonsense and they come to an agreement at a lower price. Uh, so what I've done is I've purchased shares with a basis of like $39.40 and I sold $40 covered calls for January 2023. And I got $6.20 for those. So basically, I have upside to $46.20. Um, you know, obviously, the buyout's at $54.20. So uh, if they do come down off of it, say $47, $48, whatever, it'll look good. But God forbid something happens and the deal falls apart. My basis on Twitter is now, you know, $33.20, which if we look, is right... We haven't had a weekly close below 33.20 since March. Yeah. Yeah, in March we closed at 32.77. But that was before Elon ever got involved. So um, I'm fine with that. And so that's my trade for the next uh, couple months. Obviously, I'm selling put spreads for income around it. But like I said, I'm trying to enjoy my time with the baby and... Uh, I'm kind of just trying to be in the market without having to be so active every day. And for me, that's Twitter. You know, obviously I sell my put spreads every week and those are great. They, they're my income, but, um, Twitter is just one where I see substantial upside. If basically if the rules are upheld, you know, David Einhorn said, this is something where 95% of the time it should work. Okay, he said, yeah, it's 50-50, but the 50% of the side he's on works 95% of the time. And so, um, you know, if you're in the camp that no human is above the law, then, you know, you're bullish Twitter because there's absolutely no reason for Elon to back out. This bot issue is complete nonsense. Uh, even the whistleblower went against what Elon said. So um, that's how I'm looking at the market right now. I'm still not bullish not bearish. I just honestly don't care what the market does. I try to just focus on the names I'm in. And I just wanted to give you insight on how I look at all these names using scanners and how it'll help you, you know, as you go forward, use these scanners, find setups and attack them. All right. So I hope you all have a great weekend and I will see you all soon.